Hola mi gente, Adventure Elliot here. It is July 25th, and as you can see, I'm still in Madrid, but only for a few more minutes because I'm escaping the oven-like heat of Madrid and heading north back to Cantabria and Santander. Woo, I'm excited. I'm gonna film a video in Santander and show you guys what I didn't show you in the last summer's video in Santander. So stay tuned. I'm catching my blah blah car. You guys know I love blah blah car. So uh, I'll see you next in Santander. Well, you guys, I'm back in Santander almost a year later. It's a fresh 20 degrees Celsius, about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Man, it feels so good to be back. Fresh ocean, Atlantic Ocean air. We have the guy fishing here. And so I'm gonna go uh, check into my hostel, but uh, my plan for this video is to show you guys uh, what I did not show you on the video I did in Santander last year. I got a lot of heat in that video for not showing the Palacio de Magdalena and Playa Sardinero, which are apparently two of the best and most iconic sites of the city. So. This is uh, where I started the video last year. We have uh, the, this is a museum, an art cultural center. And we have this bay here where ferries and boats come across. There's the village or city of Somo over there and some great beaches. And man, it's just great to be back in Santander. So my first impressions, you guys, of Santander is everybody's wearing jackets, long sleeves. And here I am with shorts, the giri. But not everyone's wearing jackets. But it's because it's 20 degrees. It's fresquito, as they say in Spanish. Good morning, you guys. Uh, I had a great night's sleep last night at that hostel you just saw. And I'm back in Santander, like I said earlier. And I'm walking in these neighborhoods here. And I'm on my way to the Palacio de Magdalena. And after that, Playa Sardinero, which is the best beach in Santander. And one of the reasons I'm going there to these two places because the first video I made in Santander, everyone left in the comments uh, saying, why didn't you go to those places? Well, at the time I was totally exhausted from the Camino de Santiago. And these neighborhoods here are so cool. Look at this, Santander is like on a peninsula, like kind of like a little hilly peninsula. And to get around the city, you have to go up and down a lot of hills. And so I was just totally exhausted from the Camino de Santiago. The previous 10 or 12 days I had walked from San Sebastian hasta um, Santander. So I was reventado. But uh, nonetheless, I'm back in Santander to restart the Camino de Santiago. And as such, I'm gonna go explore this part of Santander and give you a proper video as requested by you guys. So just check this out, this neighborhood here. I'm not sure what it's called, but Santander has such a nice relaxing feel. Coastal, of course. You hear the seagulls, cause you know you're near the, the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the North Atlantic Ocean, the Cantabrian Sea. And uh, it has a nice humid, actually a little bit sticky air, but it's not the same as that central uh, peninsula, peninsular heat that you feel in Madrid and Andalusia and Castilla y Leon, etc. So man, there's just a lot to explore here in this neighborhood. And people from Santander, in my experience, very nice, of course. They speak very pure Spanish here. Castellano, 
Puro. They have a very nice accent. I love the accent spoken by the people in this part of Spain. So let's keep going along here and we're gonna get to the Palacio and thereafter the best beach in Santander, Playa Sardinero. So as I said, there's lots of hills here you can climb. So this looks like an interesting place to uh, go up. We have some stairs here. So let's go up these stairs and see what I can find. And so, like I mentioned, uh, I'm resuming the Camino de Santiago. My rough plans are to go from here in Santander through the rest of Cantabria and all the little towns along the northern coast uh, that you encounter. Santiana del Mar, uh, Llanes, Comillas, Gijón, etc. So I'll be going through Asturias as well. Just check out this yard here. Everything's so green up here, you guys. It's so beautiful. Being up here in the summer is great. And getting to Gijón. And if I have time, I will continue into Galicia. Well, it looks like this is a dead end. Well, like I said, that was a dead end, so I had to go a different route. So now, like I said, a hilly city. We're going downhill here. And uh, if I can get all the way to Santiago, I will. But if I don't, no worries, because the way the Camino de Santiago works is you basically do what you can. You know, if that's 100 kilometers, if that's 200, 300, you do what works for you based on your resources, uh, how you feel, your time. And so, that's what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna enjoy the rest of July and the beginning of August. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of uh, my time here in summer. It's very precious, the north in summer. I mean, just look at it. <laughs> and we'll see what happens, we'll see what happens. But I, I'm gonna try to film everything I can just like I did when I first started my channel. And I know people love the Camino de Santiago. It's a different vibe. It's not a party mode. Maybe I'll have some cider along the way, San Sidra, as they call it in Spanish. But it's not a party, you know? Like when I go to uh, Balaga, that's a party. <laughs> uh, and so this is sort of my escape. Hmm. This is my escape, my detox, so to speak. And you can see the ocean up there, you guys. Just check that out. That's a bay that crosses onto the other part. Uh, and I came here on a ferry last year. That was like two euros. And yeah, guys, I'm just gonna enjoy it and bring you guys along the way with me. I don't know if I'll be able to uh, publish videos on the regular, but I'll do what I can. And of course, in English and Spanish. So let's continue along. We're getting close to the famous palace. So the center of Santander is that way, a couple kilometers. Uh, and you can see that in the first video. I'll link it above and in the description. But we're going a different way. And we look across the bay there. That is the town of Somo, S-O-M-O. -O. And you just see the Cantabrian mountains in the background. And if you come here on the Camino de Santiago, uh, if, you can't, if you came from the east that is, you're gonna cross these mountains and it's one of the most gorgeous days of the whole hike. I also have a video showing that, and I titled that The Road to Santander. I'll link that. And man, like, you walk along these cliffs and you look down and you see the ocean, and there's just mist rising from the waves. It's very green, and it is just out of this world, unlike anything I've ever experienced. And look at a lot of these people in northern Spain, they have their own gardens, like everywhere. Everyone has gardens. I'm just absolutely enamored with this part of Spain so much. I mean, I know I say that wherever I go, but the, 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 the la variedad de España, the variation of Spain and the geography is just phenomenal. And what makes it unique is that, yes, it's a rather large country for European standards, but you can get to all parts of Spain on bus and train and plane in a short amount of time. In a place like the United States, 
that obviously has unique geography itself. Um, you can't get to the west coast from the east coast in a matter of hours. You know? So you have to take a plane and it's costly or you gotta drive. The infrastructure is just not on par with Europe. No offense, but just look at that in the background, you guys. That is, that's, this is why I come to Northern Spain. This is why thousands of others come up here on vacation. And it's less traveled to as well. And look at these houses, you know? You're thinking of real estate in Southern Spain, Costa del Sol. Why not think of some of these places up here in the north? Look at this. They got a great view and it doesn't get too cold here in the winter. It has that maritime climate. I mean, you see the palm trees. It doesn't get below freezing, seldom. And it doesn't get above uh, 30 degrees Celsius. So what? Uh, can't really go wrong. All right, so we're approaching the palace. It's getting closer and closer. You can just tell leading up to it. This isn't the palace, but you're gonna wanna watch until the end of this video to see the palace. And just check out these views. It's clearing up here. Wow, you guys. Guach, as they say in Spain Spanish. <laughs> wow. Yes, this is what I'm talking about right here. Palacio de la Magdalena por la derecha, vamos. So I think that uh, it's actually closed during the week, or at least to get a tour, you have to pay, I think, five euros. But as you see, people are still going down here. So I think we are going to be able to get at least a view of what it looks like from the outside. And if we can, we will explore a little bit. So we have uh, Recinto de Magdalena. So this, this is like a little mini peninsula on the bigger peninsula here. And down this way is the Palacio. But it looks like they've turned this area into a place for concerts, for events, etc, etc, etc. So we're here, as I said, and this is what it looks like now. And this is the palace. And I'm going to do a walk around and then go to the beach nearby. But yeah, you see there's a, a sports zone here and it's a little peninsula within a peninsula. So the tourists are out today, including myself, to come see the famous Palacio de la Magdalena. So let's continue along here in this park. And I believe the palace is up this way. Canary Island palm tree, wow, okay. This is giving me similar vibes to the castle that I explored in San Sebastian last year. I have a video on that too. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Disfrutando aquí. Ustedes son de Santander. No, de México. Mexicanos, americano, gringo, gringo. Los dos somos americanos, pues. Exactamente. Yo en español hablas muy bien. Sí, sí, es que yo llevo dos años en, en, en España. Ah, pero claro. también conozco México, Costa Rica, Panamá, Colombia. Madre. Me mola. Aquí se dice en España, me mola. Me, mola. me gusta. Me encanta. Bueno. Para que sepas. Entonces, Está España es un país muy bonito, ¿no? ¿Eh? Muy bonito, España. Está muy bonito. ¿Conoces de antes o.? Sí, conocía Madrid, pero no conocía el norte. Mm, precioso, precioso. Mucho. Yo no sé una comparación en México, quizás Chiapas, pero no sé. Es diferente. Sí. Wow, just check out the palace here. So let me uh, give you some short history here about the palace. Construction started in 1909, so 
beginning of the 20th century there. And it finished in 1911. What a quick construction for that time. And King Alfonso XIII and his family, the royal family, would spend time here. And then they would continually spend time here as a summer escape until 1931 when the Second Republic uh, took power. And what happened is they stopped coming here and this kind of became a different place. And then later on in the 20th century, they restored it to what it looks like now. Quite impressive architecture here. And I can only imagine the views from up there are so great. Uh, and now uh, at the end of the 20th century and 21st century now, it's obviously a tourist site. You can go and take tours inside, but nonetheless, very beautiful and uh, impressive. Here's what the views look like. Obviously not as good as if you were up there in the tower, but man, this GoPro really captures the palace, this wide view. And so like I said, when I first filmed the video here in Santander, I didn't come here. I was too exhausted to keep walking to the end of the peninsula. And I, of course, missed this, but I'm here and I'm glad I came back. And I'm glad that you guys can see this. So just soaking up the views. And of course, these ladies got to come here for the Instagram <laughs> and enjoy the palace. Now, like I said, I don't think it's open during the weeks to go do tours on the inside. But if you're photogenic, definitely come to this place and get some pictures for the Instagram. I mean, that's what it's all about here in 2021. Furthermore, if you're coming to get some great views, in Santander, maybe not of the city, but of the landscape. Here is uh, the best place, I think, to uh, capture those views. Just look at that. So on the road to Santander, the video I made, I was walking along those cliffs there in the distance to Somo over there where I took a, a ferry across the bay here. And I remember seeing this palace in the ferry, but I didn't know how to get there, and like I said, I was too tired, but... We're back, we're back. Guess who's back? Back again. Adventure Elliot, tell your friends. Now with Santander, being along the coast here, a coastal city in the northern part of Spain, it's only fitting that we have some replicas of some smaller ships here. Interesting, look at this. And these ones, quite fascinating, these, uh, these boats here. I wonder from what time in history were these boats? I have no idea, but not anything modern, of course. So Playa Sardinero is right up here, you guys. Let's go check it out. Interestingly enough, there's some uh, seals down here, some focas, and look at they come up to greet you. Pretty friendly guys, look at them. They have their little natural pool here. And just another little attraction in this park here uh, in Santander. Parque, hey, Bucks, Walkie Books, Mi Equipo. Campeones, Campeones. <laughs> here we go, behind us we have Playa Sardinero. And look at it. What's nice about these beaches here in northern Spain is they're so wide. The tide goes so low and it comes so high during high and low tide. And the, the sand is so fine, so soft and white. And you know, when you're in the Mediterranean and the Costa del Sol, a lot of times the beaches are narrow and rocky. Um, so maybe we should go do a walk down on the beach and sort of maybe end the video there on this uh, second video from Santander, from the better half. And yeah, just like I said, that nice fine white sand, it feels so good on the feet. Nice little massage, so let's take a little walk along the famous Playa Sardinero. Wow, you can see the tide 
and the day comes all the way up here and it goes down where those you know where the people are bathing in the uh, low tide so quite quite a difference with the Atlantic Ocean or I guess the Cantabrian Sea here in terms of the high and low tide now if you remember in Cadiz I was out on that ca castle there and I jumped off the bridge during high tide but during low tide it was totally exposed so you could definitely not jump off the bridge there so tides are an interesting thing from a geographic standpoint so in Santander instead of going to the gym for exercise you come to the beach for a morning walk I mean just absolutely full of uh, walkers here getting their daily walk in nice exercise and up here we have it looks like a surf school the waves aren't you know quite big enough to uh, surf here but the kids can get their bearings and if you want some real surfing you just go to the other side across the bay to Somo it's called and the waves are absolutely massive there and other places along this northern coast have great surfing along with Portugal I think some of the best surfing in all of Europe in the continental Europe uh, is here in northern Spain and in Portugal in fact some places in Portugal the waves are are too big for any amateur and even too big for some professionals quite dangerous but I can't remember the name but man if you're a surfing fan come up here to northern Spain and if you just want to enjoy the the coastline as well like this like you see hundreds of other people doing right now come up here for a nice morning walk Well, you guys I thought I was gonna end the video back at that beach but it's a very nice sunny day here in Santander and I'm grabbing some delicious tacos here it's been a while since I had tacos and so I think it would be a good idea to continue the video and uh, walk to some of the overlooks of the city and give you a view of the city that last year when I came here it was cloudy we couldn't see the same uh, stuff so let's go ahead there after I eat these tacos so let's continue along a little uh, urban tour now of Santander. You guys, the city has so many cool little spots to explore. And as I said, I'm gonna go up to that Mirador, which is an outlook where I can get a better view of the city and then end the video there. But wow, I love this city of Santander. This city's got a lot to offer and quite interesting architecture, certainly different than the center part, the southern part of Spain. And as you saw that uh, Palacio earlier, that was not Spanish architecture there. And any of you uh, architecture people, can you guys tell me what influenced this uh, here and uh, these buildings here because I'm pretty fascinated by this stuff So there's these escalators right here in the middle of the city that help you, uh, of course, go up and go down. And there's what's called the funicular, just like a little cable car. And I think that's where these people are going, so I'll join them. Buen dia. Hola, buenos días. Well, I finally made it to the place that I wanted to show you to end the video and do the city views justice here in Santander, Cantabria, Northern Spain. 
just check out these views here of the city and the ocean in the distance this is where all the ships come through and there's a port over there and the city of Santander and if you look way into the distance that's the Cantabrian coastline and eventually you would get to Pais Vasco or Basque country and then from there you would get to the Pyrenees mountains and the border of France and so if you're thinking of coming to Spain you know you're putting on your checklist Toledo Sevilla, Cordoba, the Costa del Sol. Well, do yourself a favor and at least look into the northern part of Spain. It's sort of off the beaten path to some degree when you compare it to the other parts of Spain and totally worth it. And so uh, I'm gonna head back down to the hostel and edit this video for you guys, but my next steps are the Camino de Santiago. I'm gonna go westward through the rest of Cantabria, Asturias, and eventually Galicia. And so I hope you guys like this video. Join me on the Camino de Santiago. You're gonna see a lot of these little villages into the countryside and mountainsides. And then you're gonna see a lot of interesting coastal cities and um, lots of beaches. So stay tuned. Adventure Elliot, peacing out. I'll see you guys on the next video. Hasta luego.